Hello to all the viewers, my name is Anae Pepo and I'm an Honours Geology student at Rhodes University. Today I'll be doing a crash course on the Earth's core. Firstly, how do we know that the Earth's core is molten with a solid centre? We will be looking at seismic activity specifically, focusing on earthquakes and the temperature versus depth diagram. Earthquakes distribute waves in all directions. We get S waves, which give us an idea of the state of the core, whether it's solid or liquid, and the depth of the outer core boundary. Then we have P waves, which give us an idea of a denser core boundary, and in this case would be the solid center. S waves are described as transverse waves which move back and forth in liquids only. They are, however, slower, slower than the P waves. Below is a diagram that shows the motion of these waves. During an earthquake, the waves are either reflected back to the surface, giving a curved direction, or absorbed by the core as they move to deeper depths. Some waves do go back to the surface, but do not follow the expected path. It can also be noted that on the other side of the world, no waves are recorded. This side is known as the S-wave shadow zone. These two situations serve as an indicator that the waves encountered a solid body that prevented the transmission of the waves because they cannot move through solids, only liquids. Then we have our P waves, which are described as longitudinal, fast-moving waves that can move through both solids and liquids. Below is a diagram that also shows its motion. When the waves travel going at deeper depths, at about 5,000 kilometers, the path of the waves changes because they are entering a material with a different refraction index past the outer core, and this is known as the inner core. The temperature versus depth diagram. We have the geotherm, which is a line that shows the temperature and pressure at increasing depth. At about 3,000 kilometers, there is a change in the trend of the lines, whereby the melting temperature of the material is lower than the geotherm. In other words, the recorded temperature is higher than the melting temperature of the material, further proving that we have a molten outer core. How do we know that we have a solid metal composed core? The first one that we look at is that the Earth's formation theory, that the Earth formed by asteroids. It is believed that the Earth formed by coalescing asteroids, which are small rocky objects that orbit the Sun. They are mainly composed of iron. Secondly, we relate the velocity of the waves with the predominant element, in this case, iron. The velocity of waves changes depending on the properties of that material. The measured P wave velocity is close to that of iron measured at suitable temperature and pressure. Thirdly, we use the Earth's density to estimate the core element. We calculate the Earth's density using the volume and gravitational pull. From this, we can conclude the element forming the core. Using iron's density to calculate the Earth's mass, we give us the closest estimate of the Earth's mass. Last point, high temperature and pressure at the core prevents iron from melting. At those conditions, the solid state is preferred. This is a realistic presentation of the Earth. We have the crust, the mantle, the molten outer core, and the solid inner core. The importance of the Earth's core is that firstly, it forms the Earth's magnetic field. This field protects us from cosmic radiation, making the Earth habitable, as well as setting the direction for our campus devices. Lastly, it also has historical information about the Earth's formation. Thank you. That will be all for today, and I hope you come back for more crash content. Bye.